H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus. One-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Welcome to H2K Infosys software testing course. This is Priya here from H2K Infosys. And in this video, you will learn the software engineering basics. The QA needs to understand the basics of software engineering because a tester has to coordinate with other members of the IT project team. A software is basically a set of programs developed for specific purpose. For example, net banking, online shopping sites, gaming applications, mobile applications, etc. To develop the software, we follow the SDLC. SDLC is Software Development Life Cycle, a step-by-step -step approach to develop the software. The different steps of the software development life cycle are the scope identification, wherein the BA gathers the requirements from the client and documents it in the business requirement document, the BRD. In the project plan phase, the project manager prepares the project plan document, which has a schedule and the budget of the project. In the analysis phase, we have the business analyst who provides the specifications of each requirement with the mock-up diagrams and it's documented in the functional specification document. In the design phase, there is an architect who designs the software programming logic and documents it in the design document. In the development, the developers or the programmers do the coding by referring to the design document in the source code document. Then comes the testing. In the testing phase, the software tester or a QA tests the software by identifying the defects and verifying the software compliance with the client requirements and create the test documents. Now the software is ready to be deployed. In the deployment phase, the developers with the assistance of the system administrators deploy the software or release the software to the client. The installation manual is referred for the deployment purpose. The installation manual has the steps to deploy the software. The last step is the user acceptance testing, wherein the real users test the software with the assistance of the business analyst and the QA by referring to the user manual. These are the eight different steps. These are the eight different steps to develop the software as per the SDLC, the software development life cycle. The software is developed by the IT project team that comprises of the project manager who is the head of the IT project team who plans and coordinates and controls the activities of the project. Then comes the business analyst who coordinates between the IT project team and then the client team. The developer or a programmer develops the software or does the programming. An architect designs the software. The QA tests the software. A configuration management team tracks and controls the changes in the software. QA team for the testing. The testing is done by the QA team. It includes the QA manager who plans and controls the testing activities. A test lead or a QA lead if a project is complex, there could be many groups of testers led by the QA lead. There are software testers, include all the manual testers, automation testers, entry level testers, performance testers and so on. Then there are end users and the clients. Let's consider an example of a net banking software project for XYZ Bank. Here the XYZ bank is a client and then the customers of XYZ bank are the end users. In all the IT projects, we follow the same steps of software development lifecycle to develop the software. But since every project is different, the client, the requirements, the technology, 
The overall project scenario is different. We follow the different approaches to develop the software, which is called as SDLC models. Now let us see the waterfall model. This is a sequential design process, wherein all the steps have to be followed in the sequence as mentioned in the SDLC, the software development life cycle. It's a top-down approach. We start with the scope identification and move towards the user acceptance testing. We cannot go back to the previous steps of the software development and that's why the new requirements and changes in the requirements cannot be accepted in the mid of the project. The clear and complete requirements have to be gathered from the client right at the start of the project. This model is applicable for simple and low budget projects. The Agile Scrum model. One of the popular models is the Agile Scrum model. Scrum is a methodology in the Agile framework. Software is developed in several incremental releases called as sprint. In each sprint for a given set of requirements, we do the planning, the analysis, design and development, testing. So this is one sprint and several sprint of this kind are done in the Agile Scrum model. There are three key roles in the Agile Scrum. The product owner who defines features needed in the product provides the bright ideas for the project. The Scrum Master protects the team and process and is responsible for running the meetings and keeping the project going. The team develops the software, involves the BA, the developer, QA and so on. The user stories. The user stories, a way of describing the feature which is described in the below format, as a user, I need something so that certain thing can be achieved. This is a format of a user story. User stories allow product owners to specify right amount of detail to the team to estimate the size of the task. Here is the Agile Scrum workflow. A product owner creates a product backlog and prioritizes the features. The sprint planning is done for prioritized features by the team, scrum master and the product owner. The sprint backlog has the high priority user stories to be understood. The software is developed in sprints in a time box of one to three weeks for each sprint. The daily scrums are daily stand-up meeting by the team to discuss what is completed, what they are currently working on and any blocked items. The outcome of a sprint is potentially shippable product. The product owner can decide whether it is ready to be shipped or any additional feature could be added. At the end of the sprint, in a sprint review, the team showcases their work to the product owner and in a retrospective, team works on what they can do to improve the process. This workflow is repeated for every sprint. This is the Agile Scrum model. The software applications can be of two types. The Windows based that are standalone applications. For example, Microsoft Office, the Notepad, the Calculator program, the MS Paint, etc. The web based applications. These are the software that require the system to be on a network like an internet. For example, the Google.com, the eBay.com and so on. So these are the two types of the software applications. Thank you for watching the video. This was Priya here from H2K Infosys. You can contact us at 770-777-1269 or email us at training at h2kinfosys.com and h2kinfosys at gmail.com.